Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Um, in, in private um, remarks to the leaders of a, uh, a Latin American church group, Pope Francis um, was, uh, was uh, said to have uh, lamented that a quote-unquote gay lobby was at work in the Vatican. And there have been reports uh, over the uh, months that the reason for the resignation of the previous pope was uh, because of a, a gay lobby and um, uh, all that speculation. Joining us now is the man you go to when there's these kinds of re revelations or speculation or, or questions to deal with, uh, the president of the Catholic League, Bill Donahue, joins us. Hello, Bill. How are you doing, Steve? Good. Always good to see you, my Thank friend. Thank you for having me on. Thank L you. Love having you in studio. All right. What the heck is, is, is the gay lobby, and what, what is the Pope talking about in the, with regard to the Vatican? Well, first of all, there is a gay lobby. Uh, whether or not he spoke about this, we're a little unsure because the Vatican is formally saying we're not talking about it. But look, it's no secret. A gay lobby basically means this. You've got a nest of priests. Uh, you have them in the United States. You've had them in seminaries. You've had them uh, in parishes. More so in the past, certainly, than today. In other words, if you went back to the 1970s, Andrew Greeley, who was hardly a conservative and passed away just recently, the priest, he referred to them as the Lavender Mafia. Now, no one would ever, would ever accuse him of being a Bill Donahue conservative. Right, right. So he talked about the Lavender Mafia. A gay lobby means that you've got a nest of, of homosexual priests who are covering for each other. Uh, are they in the Vatican? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if you still have them. The, we have certainly less of a problem today in 2013 than we had 10, 20, and 30 years ago. Uh, but we shouldn't have any of these people acting on their own with their own agenda. And this is significant when it comes to accusations, at least, of blackmail? Well, yeah, I mean, going beyond that, I mean, in the past, we did have a problem with the sexual abuse of minors back in the 60s, 70s, and the first part of the 80s. We don't have that problem today, thank God, partly because uh, the predecessor of Pope Francis, uh, uh, Pope Benedict, made clear to try and clean house so that it's very hard now for a practicing homosexual to get into the seminary, which is the way it should be. If you're a homosexual and you're not practicing, people like myself, I wouldn't have any problem. I know some priests are gay. I don't consider them bad guys. Uh, but if you can't keep your vows, straight or gay, then you ought to get out. And, and, and you know, why, why would the Pope, if he did, mm -hmm. address this, acknowledge this? So what, what's the significance of it beyond this, you know, what you're saying, which doesn't make it seem, if there's not a, 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 an abuse problem, which, as you correctly right. stated, is, is something that's basically in the past, then what's the, what's the point? There have been problems in the Curia, in, in, in the administrative apparatus of the Vatican. Which he has vowed to change and has started change. changing. Yeah. And there are people who have their own little mission, their own little turf. And he's got to crack that. Somebody threw this out to him, evidently. And then he commented on it. Now, you know, one of the nice things about this pope is that he will say some things off the cuff. That, the, the, everything in life is a double-edged sword. The, other, the dark side of that is that maybe he, he might say something which, if you don't know the totality of the context, uh, could be chopped up and misread. Uh, now, if, if, a, if a priest uh, at the Vatican is found to be gay, is, uh, is that grounds for... No. 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 A gay lobby means that, again, you have your own little nest of people who will cover for each other, who will put the better interest of your friends over the interest of the Catholic Church. It has certainly been a problem in the 70s and in the 80s and into the 90s, and there's no doubt a problem to some extent today, but less so. Uh, you've got to crack this open. You're either a priest committed to Jesus or, uh, and, and everything else has to be secondary. And once you have competing interest, whether it be sexuality or otherwise, uh, then you're the problem and you need to go. Are you surprised that uh, if he uh, acknowledged it, even if it was thrown out to him, he would actually comment on it? I mean, is this, is this something previous uh, popes you think would have, would have done? Uh, he has a, a, a temperament, which is a little bit different, Absolutely. which I think is refreshing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he'll say something that, that, that it's on his mind. I just hope he doesn't get beaten up because he gets a little bit too casual with it. But no, look, uh, to the extent that there still is a gay lobby, there's no doubt that there is one uh, still in the Catholic Church, it needs to be rooted out. And uh, I think that hopefully he'll, he'll follow the footsteps of Pope Benedict in doing exactly that. And root it out so that uh, the, the people don't cover for each other to That's the detriment exactly right. of the church. That's exactly right. All right. Let's talk about um, a, a bill uh, that uh, is, is in the legislature, I guess, in California that you, you, know, you made me aware of, and I'm stunned. 
Yeah, I mean, we've seen this before. It's been, it's been tried in New York. They're still trying in New York. It's been tried in Colorado and other places. It's amazing. We don't have, thank God, a problem of sexual abuse of minors in the Catholic Church today. We have a total number of seven, 7.0 7 credible accusations made annually against over 40,000 priests over the last six years. Now, we shouldn't have any, but, I mean, that record I'll put up against any institution, secular or religious, in our society today. We did have the problem in the past. Now, what bothers me is that in California, they have 500,000 cases of child abuse a year. They have over 800 cases investigated in the, in, the, uh, in the public schools, thousands of cases more that they haven't got a chance to get to. And they want to pass a law which would suspend the statute of limitations, which, by the way, was already done 10 years ago in the Catholic Church. But it will apply only to private institutions, read Catholic schools. They're giving the public schools, which is the very bed uh, where sexual abuse of minors is taking place today. It is so bad in Miramonte Elementary School, a Latino neighborhood in southern Los, Los Angeles, that they've actually had to close down the entire school for a couple of days because of these ch second grade and third grade kids being raped and orally, uh, I don't even want to get into it, what they've done abused, out there, yeah. abused. And they have the nerve, By the teachers. lawmakers, they're going to go after Catholics and give the public schools a pass? It got passed the Senate. We're trying to fight it in the Assembly. It's absolutely obscene. You either have one law for everybody. I mean, don't we have a 14th Amendment written in 1868 which says you can't have one law for white, white people and another law for black people? That was the meaning of equal protection un under the law. How can you have a law that applies to Catholics and not to public school uh, teachers? It's, it's astonishing. But what's astonishing is, unless uh, you know that this would only affect private institutions, you don't know who's left out. Well, that's exactly right. What happens in virtually every state in this country, what they're under the doctrine of sovereign immunity, all public institutions, in this case here, public schools are most concerned about, are automatically exempt. You have to, have, you, you, any, any abuse that takes place within 90 days, it's already too late. Now, they're making a big deal in California if it's before 2009, then, then it doesn't count if you've been raped in a public school, but after 2009. You can go back to when JFK was president and get the Catholic schools. It's all about deep pockets. It's all about uh, trying to get the Catholic Church, and I'm fed up with it. All right, Dan Savage, who is... Um, I have nothing nice to say about Dan Savage. No. I want you to hear something that Dan Savage said on... Uh, was it Stephen Colbert's show? Um, uh, about uh, contraception and Catholics. Cut 16. We have cut 16. All right. You know who else is a single payer model? Who? Vatican City. Has well, a single yeah, payer health care system. This, this is it right there. No. <laughs> you're good. It no, covers good. everything but birth control because ultra boys can't get pregnant. When ultra boys start getting pregnant, it'll cover birth control too. Now, listen, uh, we're going to gloss over that for just a moment. As okay. the Catholic Church has done for decades. I'm a, good, I'm a son of the church. Why on earth does anybody put that man on their show? I don't understand it. I mean, uh, I've been on with Colbert a couple of times, a nice guy. I'm very disappointed in him. I don't know what's happened to him. He seems to have gone off the rails. You bring a, a guy like him on there who's not only anti-Catholic, he's obscene. And he's also a liar or he's ignorant in terms of what he just said. As I said before, we don't have this problem today, but it's because of people like Savage and Moore and others. They want to continue to float this in the public mind that we have this kind of problem. You know, he has a book out now, Savage, evidently, and he savages me. Big surprise. I could care less. I am concerned when he attacks my priests, most of whom are good guys and have been maligned by people like him. The man is an obscene bigot, and for Stephen Colbert to bring him on his show, what in the world did he expect him to say? I mean, Dan Savage has said horrific, he writes horrific things, he says horrific things, and he's, he's way over the top, so over the top that, uh, but yet he's, he's mainstreamed. Yeah, he was brought in and, in fact, into a number of different colleges last year that we looked at. We couldn't believe why you would bring in someone like him. What is he, a sex expert? Uh, a sex yeah, advisor? Yeah, that's what he calls himself, yeah. I mean, you know, 30 years ago, people like him would, would, would have wound up in Times Square before Rudy Giuliani uh, cleaned it up. You know, he'd be in the, little, in the peep shows. Now he goes on Stephen Colbert. It's not a good sign for our culture. Talk to me about something that you made me aware of also. We're talking to Bill Donahue, the, uh, the president of the Catholic League here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, something that was believed to be true for many years that's not true in Ireland. Well, okay, going back to the 19th century, first started by the Protestants and then the Catholic Church picked it up, particularly nuns. Throughout the 19th, late 19th, and certainly the 20th century up until the 1990s, 
you had these places, their laundries, laundry facilities, they're called the Magdalene Laundries for fallen women. Women who might have gotten pregnant out of wedlock, women who were prostitutes, women who were drug addicts, homeless, and the like. The Catholic Church would take them in and the nuns would attend to them. In 2002, an Irishman, a former Catholic, they're the worst bigots, uh, Peter Mullen, M-U-L-L-A-N, he came out with a movie on this, the, the Magdalene Sisters, where he argued that these nuns raped and sexually abused and horror shows and tortured and beat and destroyed these women. I mean, it was the worst thing. They, they call it the Irish Holocaust, in fact, and things of that nature. And everybody believed this stuff. The New York Times printed every word of it. The BBC printed every word of it. Then there began to have some investigations, including one in the UN, and they didn't really come up with much. Finally, a Senator McLeese out in Ireland, uh, McLeese, M-C, capital A-L-E-E-S-E, -E -E, he decided, Mark McLeese, let's have a panel, let's have a major investigation. Let's interview all the women who are alive today who went through the Magdalene Lawn. Let's interview all the doctors, the physicians who attended to these women. Let's get our hands on all the records. Let's finally get to the bottom of this. Now, I may be one of the few people who's actually read it, we know one thing, the New York Times and the BBC have read it, and they don't report on it. It came out on February the 5th of 2013, and basically what it came down to this, not a single case, not one, where a woman was sexually abused by a nun. No cases of beating and torture. There was no Holocaust. The doctors said we've never seen better care and the like. Uh, it's all made up out of whole cloth. It's, it's a horror story. They've got the best of evidence, and shame on Edna Kennedy. He, Kennedy happens to be the Prime Minister of Ireland, who, of course, Boston College accepted him as the commencement speaker recently. Cardinal Sean O'Malley, the Archbishop of Boston, was smart enough not to go there because the guy is basically pro-abortion, the Prime Minister of Ireland. But worse in this case, he knows what went on. He's still apologizing. Apologizing for what? The Prime Minister of Ireland is an utter disgrace. He knows that this abuse didn't take place. They are continuing the Mythology. So I've written a, a booklet about this subject, the myths of the Magdalene Laundry, to finally set it straight with all of the uh, the origin of the mythology and, and a point-by-point -point, uh, refutation taken from the McLeese report. It's, it's a definitive work. I don't know where the other Irish are, either in Ireland or in the United States, why it had to fall to me, but if they didn't, didn't have the guts to take it, I'll take it on. Everything.